ever feel like your internet connection is about as fast as a snail dipped in molasses? Like you're stuck in the Cyber Stone Age while the rest of the world zooms ahead at light speed? Especially if you're living in certain parts of the world, and hey, I'm not calling names. Well, my friends, prepare to have your minds blown and your download speeds supercharged, because we're about to enter the wild, wacky, and borderline magical world of Starlink. You've probably heard the name whispered in hushed tones among the internet elite, a mythical system promising to deliver blistering broadband from the heavens themselves. But what exactly is this cosmic marvel, and how does it work? Is it some sort of alien technology? A top secret government experiment? Or just the fever dream of a certain eccentric billionaire with a penchant for flamethrowers and electric cars? The truth, as you will soon discover, is far more fascinating than any science fiction tale. Starlink is a real, tangible, and utterly mind-boggling feat of human ingenuity. A constellation of satellites orbiting our planet like a celestial shipper network raining down internet speeds that will make your old cable provider weep tears of envy. So gear up, my fellow sojourners, because we're about to embark on a journey through the final frontier of internet connectivity. We'll explore the bleeding edge of satellite technology, the physics-defying wizardry that keeps these orbiting data couriers aloft, and the sheer audacity of Elon Musk's grand vision to bring high-speed internet to every corner of the globe. Trust me, by the end of this deep dive, you'll never look at your Wi-Fi router the same way again. The internet as we know it is about to be turned on its head, and you've got a front row seat to the revolution. Shall we begin? Starlink, the internet savior we've all been waiting for, with a network of satellites orbiting just a few hundred miles above the Earth's surface promises to deliver lightning-fast internet speeds to even the most remote corners of the Earth. No more buffering, no more dropped connections, and no more cursing at your computer screen like a sailor with a potty mouth. Or, you know, just a regular sailor. But how exactly does this magical internet from space system work? First things first, let's talk about the satellites themselves. These bad boys are no ordinary hunks of metal and circuitry. They're sleek, compact, and packed with more advanced technology than a modern-day smartphone. Each one weighs in at around 500 pounds, that's like 200 bags of dog food for those of you keeping score at home, and is equipped with powerful antennae, ion thrusters for orbital adjustments, and a whole host of other fancy gadgets that would make even the most seasoned techie drool. Now, here's where things get really interesting. Imagine trying to blanket the entire planet with internet coverage using just a handful of satellites in geostationary orbit, like the ones used for TV broadcasts and weather monitoring. It would be like trying to cover an entire football field with a single umbrella. Not very effective, and you'd end up with a lot of wet spots. Not only that, those traditional satellite dishes were designed to communicate with geostationary satellites orbiting a whopping 35,785 kilometers above the Earth's surface. Imagine trying to have a conversation with someone on the other side of the planet when you're both shouting through a really long pipe, and that's about how effective this would be. Not exactly conducive to high-speed internet, am I right? Starlink's solution? Throw a bunch of satellites into low Earth orbit, like a cosmic game of hungry, hungry hippos. By having thousands of satellites orbiting at an altitude of around 555 kilometers, which is higher than the International Space Station, but still well below the orbits of traditional communication satellites, Starlink can provide seamless internet connection to a much larger area of the Earth's surface. But now, you might be thinking, doesn't that mean the satellites are constantly moving and changing position? You're absolutely right, my astute friend. You see, each Starlink satellite is essentially a sophisticated mobile internet router, capable of establishing and maintaining connections with ground stations and user terminals as it zips across the sky. It's kind of like a celestial game of hot potato, where the satellites are constantly handing off internet traffic to one another, ensuring a smooth and uninterrupted connection no matter where you are on the planet. And here's the kicker. Because the satellites are in such low orbits, the data doesn't have to travel nearly as far as it would with traditional satellite internet services. That means lower latency, 
which is fancy talk for less delay or lag, and faster speeds that will make your old cable internet look like a dial-up modem from the Stone Age. That's right, no more getting 360 no-scopes because you've got such bad lag because your internet sucks. But now, how do these satellites actually get their internet juice? Well, that's where the ground stations come into play. These are essentially massive antennae and data centers strategically placed around the world, acting as the gateways between the Starlink constellation and the good old internet we all know and love. The ground stations beam data up to the Starlink satellites, which then relay that data back down to user terminals, those fancy little dishes you've installed on your roof or in your backyard. These babies were named Dishy McFlatface, aka Dishy. Now, I know what you're thinking. Dishy McFlatface? Seriously? Who named this thing a five-year-old? Well, sort of. The name was a result of a cheeky crowdsourcing contest. But don't let the ridiculous name fool you. This flat little dish is packed with more advanced technology than a NASA control room. Dishy McFlatface, contrary to what its name would have you think, is also sleek and compact compared to its predecessors. And it has an incredibly advanced user terminal that's the key to unlocking Starlink's blazing fast internet speeds. And now I bet you're wondering because you're just so full of questions. Wait a minute, if these satellites are constantly moving, how does Dishy keep up? Excellent question, my inquisitive friend. That's where the real magic happens. You see, Dishy is equipped with a phased array antenna, a fancy term for a bunch of tiny antennas working together in perfect harmony. It's like having a squad of highly trained snipers all aiming at the same target, except instead of bullets, they're firing concentrated beams of data at the Starlink satellites. Yeah, you heard that right. Beams. Like, laser beams. Is it just me or is this sounding more and more like something straight out of a sci-fi movie? Maybe. But it really isn't. Because, instead of using them to blow up enemy spaceships, they're using them to transmit data between satellites at incredibly high speeds. But here's the really cool part. This phased array antenna can dynamically adjust its beam pattern to track and communicate with multiple satellites simultaneously. And get this, Dishy is so advanced that it can even communicate with satellites that are below the horizon, thanks to a nifty little party favor called atmospheric refraction. So even though those satellites are playing a cosmic game of peekaboo with Dishy, popping in and out of view, our trusty Dish doesn't miss a beat. And here we go again with the questions. I bet you're wondering about all the possible obstructions, like trees or high-rise buildings. Surely they must block the signal, right? Nope. That's where Dishy's smart self-positioning system comes into play. You see, when you first set up your Dishy McFlatface... Ugh, I can't get over that name. It goes through a calibration process where it scans the surrounding area for potential obstructions. And if an obstruction does pop up, say a pesky tree decided to grow a few extra branches, Dishy will politely ask you to move it to a better location. Your own tiny little satellite dish concierge, making sure you're always getting the best possible service. But wait, there's more. Dishy McFlatface... Ugh is also equipped with a suite of sensors and motors that allow it to automatically adjust its position and orientation to maintain optimal connectivity with the Starlink constellation. And let's not forget about the weather. Anyone who has a satellite dish knows that they're a pain in the butt when it comes to rain, snow, or even heavy cloud cover. Try having a conversation with someone through a thick fog. You might catch a word or two, but good luck stringing a coherent sentence together. But not Dishy McFlatface. Oh, no, 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 no. This rad guy's built tough, with a hydrophobic coating that repels moisture like a duck's feathers. It can power through even the most intense downpours and blizzards, leaving that old satellite dish crying tears of envy as it gets sent off to the junkyard of shame. The whole exchange is like a cosmic game of telephone, but instead of passing whispered messages, we're passing terabytes of data at blistering speeds. Hmm, I think I hear your wallet saying something like, Doesn't all this fancy satellite technology cost an arm and a leg? And his concerns aren't all that off base. Building and launching thousands of satellites into orbit ain't cheap, and neither is the ground infrastructure required to support such a massive system. But here's the thing. By leveraging the power of reusable rockets, thanks SpaceX, 
and mass producing satellites on an industrial scale, Starlink is aiming to bring the cost of satellite internet down to a fraction of what traditional services charge. We're talking about affordable, high-speed internet for everyone, from rural communities to remote villages, and even for nomads living off the grid. Dishy McFlatface uh, will set you back a cool $599, plus taxes and shipping, of course, which is no small chunk of change. But when you consider the fact that it's essentially a self-contained, self-adjusting, weather-resistant internet portal to a constellation of orbiting satellites, that price tag starts to look a little more reasonable. Oh, and let's not forget about the monthly subscription fee, because you didn't think Elon Musk was just going to give away internet from space for free, did you? Currently, Starlink's residential service will run you $110 per month, which is on par with many traditional internet providers, and in some cases, even cheaper. Of course, like any ambitious technology project, Starlink hasn't been without its share of hiccups and controversies. There have been concerns about the potential impact of so many satellites on astronomical observations, as well as the risk of creating even more space debris. Because let's face it, the last thing we need is a bunch of defunct satellites careening around like cosmic pinballs, putting other spacecraft at risk. But the Starlink team has been working hard to address these issues, implementing measures like dimming the satellites to reduce their impact on astronomy, and designing the spacecraft to safely deorbit and burn up in the atmosphere at the end of their operational lifespan. So, there you have it folks, a crash course on the fascinating world of Starlink and how it's poised to revolutionize the way we access the internet. Whether you're a tech-savvy city dweller or a remote wilderness explorer, this game-changing satellite network promises to bring high-speed connectivity to the masses, all while pushing the boundaries of what's possible with cutting-edge space technology. Now, if you'll excuse me, I'm going to go binge-watch some more shows without any pesky buffering interruptions. Thanks, Starlink.